read and we have said, and what, kind, what, what are for you the main challenges of intellectual property now in Europe, considering everything which has been done and the present state of the, of the discussion? A couple of uh, remarks. Number one, one of the audience just before uh, we were starting the session was saying, after my question, what is your impression of yesterday? Um, it is first fearful and then excitement. And I think rightly mentioned. And talking about that type of line, when I was a small girl a long time ago, I always thought, what would I do if I wouldn't have fear? And I think that is at stake for all of us. We shouldn't be led by fear, but we should do our job, as well in the business world, as well in the political world. And there I have to make a couple of remarks too. For we are talking about a digital single market. And when you were addressing Elizabeth, and I'm grateful to Elizabeth, for she was one of the wise people, uh, the uh, Comité des Sages with uh, Maurice Lévy and Elizabeth, um, it was um, anyhow a proof that not by fear, but by excitement. And talking about a digital single market, we should take into account, but not only take into account, but we should use the privilege that we have with the digital single market. And of course, it's not a ring fence, the digital single market. It is a global issue, so to say. But we are open to imagination, and that should be the lead, the, the lead role. Um, when, and I don't need to explain, I did that last year, that I'm completely in favor for, indeed, a decent remuneration for artists and creators. And I couldn't agree more with your president when he is saying, if we are not feeding the artist, then it's over. So let's put that aside. We all agree on that one. I think that's a common view of everyone. Uh, yeah. So if that is the common view, and sometimes um, talking about what is really in it, it is not bad to use a couple of uh, facts and figures. For still quite a number of artists have to live from 1,000 euros a month, and that's not much to live off. Normally less than the minimum wage over Europe, so to say. But most artists, and not only the young ones, so we are not only uh, talking about startups, so to say, at the early stages of their career, have to do so. So half of the artists in the UK, half of professionals, authors in Germany, uh, and I'm told that an incredible 97.5% of the members of one of the biggest collecting societies in Europe receive less than paid repayment of 1,000 euros a month it's for a their copyright It's a question of independence rights. and freedom, as the president has said yesterday. Here we are, here we are. But if even the collecting societies are not able to give, or not willing, let's put it, I promise to be fair. So if they are not willing to pay more than 1,000 uh, euros, then I think we really have to uh, take into account that um, we, we need to go to a unique sector but also with a treatment that is fair. So we need to go back to the basics, and we put artists in the center, as far as I'm involved, not only of copyright law, by the way, but our whole policy, so to say, on culture and on growth. And we need to use creativity, out of the box thinking, far more out of the box thinking than we do so far. And I was a bit struggled and, and uh, puzzle when uh, the happy do, uh, the, the law um, was mentioned um, as a yeah, awareness tool. Come on, it shouldn't be an awareness tool. It, it should be solving the real problem that is at stake. So um, if we are all against piracy, we have to do that, but let's go back to the source where it all started. And there I'm um, highly interested in the vision also of David, for I'm a strong believer in the cloud. Uh, I'm a strong believer that we need to, uh, to um, just uh, make a, a strategy, a European strategy for cloud computing. We are active with that, and I'm looking forward to the debate with all of you. But having said that, in the cloud there could be a, a possibility to tackle the problem better than we are doing so far, for we are focusing too much on... Is there any reason to think that on that question of the cloud, the position of the Europeans or the Americans could be different? 
or it's something very new, and there we can just converge from the first uh, idea. And, well, of course, there is an opportunity uh, to go together, uh, and that would be great, but I'm also a realistic person, so I'm not that certain. And sometimes we can learn from the US, and sometimes we have to make our own policy. But just one... It's a, I can't explain, and I'm always um, hesitating if I'm a politician, yes or no, but people tell me I have a political function, so let's go for the, uh, for the politician role. I can't explain to uh, the citizen in Europe why iTunes is not selling films in Europe, or only uh, like this. Why just this week Spotify is introduced in Belgium, if we are not allowing, and there we are coming to the common line we have in common in Europe, but every time member state, for whatever reason, uh, are different approaches, talking about VAT for books, for example, crazy, um, but uh, different approaches, every member state. Having said that, if that is that difficult, then you can't expect that your people are backing you and are taking you seriously. And that is what is, in my opinion, at stake. It is not anymore the younger generation that is active in the piracy. It is all over the place. Their parents are teached by their uh, children. And that is worrying me. For first, you could think it's one lost generation. Come on and let's go. But it is far broader. So we have to go in depth to the source to tackle it, and hopefully in the new technology, we do have a couple of tools. Do you think then that uh, we all dream when we feel that a uh, new young generation is learning how gratuity is not uh, of free access to everything, is not the right thing to do, but they, on the contrary, they upward education, uh, private education to their parents? Well, Education, of course, so giving information, isn't that a better verb, so to say? But for me, it is main that people have alternatives. If you can't find a, a Spotify in your country, if you can't find a, a, prob a, a possibility, f for example, for iTunes for uh, downloading movies, yeah, are you surprised? Are you, are you dreaming or are you surprised that that is at stake? So we have to solve the problems and we have to be quick for, again, it is a broader audience than uh, just recently. Did you uh, see the, the arguments that uh, the, the Ernst & Young study uh, yeah. published on that? Mm -hmm. And do you have any comments on it? Are they the right ones? How can we fight against... Uh, do we have the right tools? Should we change the laws? Should we, should we change the... The, the way we, we enforce it? Well, I'm one of those who are... Sorry, but, uh, I'm, I'm taking the floor, but I'm not certain yet. So the, the eight points, the consumers' uh, reactions are making sense. Let, let's be honest, for that is not some dream of Ernst and Young. It is uh, the issue, it, it is real life, so to say, what, what consumers are thinking, what the citizens are thinking. Politicians need to listen anyhow to those type of arguments. So now, for us, it is translating those issues, but giving perspective for people in principle, that's my uh, entrance of this debate, are honest and are respecting laws and are respecting rules and are expecting that a artist is getting a remuneration and a decent one. So if that is your start, then you should offer them opportunities and not blocking. And the more that is over Europe, the better. For people are traveling in Europe. It is a single market, a digital single market, digitization, though they can do it at home and they can do it themselves. But if they are f confronted in other member states, for example, talking about Europe, that they can't buy or that they can't do download what they want, and uh, then uh, they are thinking, come on, politicians are... And so, so we have to take the lead again and just perform. And therefore, no fear, but excitement. Merci. Francis, just a tout petit commentaire sur ce que vient de dire Madame Cross, et puis on, on écoutera nos... Juste sur le, la réponse, est-ce qu'on a les... Yes, well, I, I do think there has been an evolution. I think there was, when we first had the internet, and we first had digital technology, a lot of resistance on the part of rights owners, and a lot of resistance on the parts of, of uh, those who had vested interests 
to putting content out there. But I do think that the situation has changed. I certainly appreciate all of those arguments that were put out by Ernst and Young. I think there has been an evolution. Uh, we are getting more and more available. I agree entirely with what Nelly Crowe says. We do need to create the infrastructure for a proper functional digital market. I would go further than Europe-wide. I would say it needs to be global because the technology is global and, and the operators are all global. And if you put something out on the internet, it's not just for Europe, it's for the whole world. So we need to create this and that's, that's a, a big task of persuading all of the actors involved that everyone has a common interest in the well-functioning global market. David, I'm sure you agree with that. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. And, and uh, uh, Commissioner Cruz referred to sort of technology and whether technology can be an aid here. And the fact of the matter is it can. You know, uh, when YouTube, Daily Motion, some of the, the early video hosting sites uh, came out, there was, you know, a lot of people were concerned about users illegally uploading. And they're, you know, still rightly concerned about users uploading uh, unauthorized copies of, of videos, movies, et cetera, all in violation of the, the terms of service, et cetera. And so you say, well, how do we deal with that question uh, uh, and still have these great platforms, which are doing all these great things and allowing for all this you know, ex expression and new artists to, to, to use it, uh, uh, et cetera. And you, know, you saw the, the impact of YouTube and other tools like that in the Arab Spring. I mean, it's clearly a, 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 an amazing social good to have these kind of platforms. But what do you do about this infringement business? And so there's a lot of legal wrangling and there are lawsuits and so forth. And some of the lawsuits are still going on. But what we, could, what we figured out was what if we build, what if we use some technology to deal with this problem? What if we set up a system where uh, you know, a, con a rights owner can send in a piece of uh, some of their video to, to YouTube and YouTube can, and, and they can say, look, we don't want this up on, on the site without our approval. YouTube can then take the sample, match it against things as users try to upload it, and then say, ah, we have a match. And then, we send, we, then you go to the content owner and says, what would you like to do? Would you like to keep it down, or would you like to leave it up and have us show ads against it, and you get the revenue, right? And it turns out that a big chunk of, of, the, of, of uh, these matches result in the content owner wanting to keep it up for users and then to monetize it. So that seems to be a good solution all around, and that's driven by uh, being able to think about it, you know, sort of creatively from a technical perspective. Elizabeth, you seem to approve as well the global answers. Um, you yeah, sure, just absolutely. To say it absolutely. Was and um, another step, um, we have the Berne Convention that says that um, copyright uh, must not be granted, but it's there from the very beginning of creation. And when I s look at what happens with Creative Commons licenses, when I see what happens with uh, people um, doing their work within Wikipedia and other, other networks and, and really working on, on things, I think we can still keep what, what we have as, as common goods and and global agreements, but still do something which is voluntarily so. And of getting back to my, my burning question, how can we find um, the right holders? Why not ask them to voluntarily um, register somewhere? And we have the cloud, we have, we have the technical means nowadays. As you said, we, we can match and, and, and can see whether this is the same person, this is the same work. And I think voluntarily, uh, we can do great things without um, changing the, the basics that have been there um, in stone for ages now. Merci. Fédélé, je vous demandais le, le, donc la réaction des, des grands médias. Vous incarnez un média plus traditionnel. Qu'est-ce que, qu que vous pensez de, de, de... Moi, je pense une chose très simple. Si on fait le même job, on doit avoir les mêmes règles. Si on fait le même job, les revenus sont à qui a le droit. Donc, nous, on est parti, je crois, d'Aristote, des moines qui étaient à, à traduire, à, à copier les, les incunables et tout ça. Mais... Nous, on fait un job qui est bien plus, plus banal, si vous voulez. On fait de la télévision. Mais si Google prend le Big Brother, pour dire le, 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 un des programmes qui sont plus... Et il le fait streaming et ne peut pas, c'est évident qu'il y a quelque chose qui ne, ne marche pas. Alors, et, et, voilà les droits. Moi, je vous donne quelques chiffres. Je ne veux pas vous ennuyer avec des chiffres. Mais le secteur européen de l'audiovisuel à un chiffre d'affaires qui est autour de 92 millions, milliards, milliards d'euros. La moitié s'en va en investissement sur les produits. Évidemment, c'est des produits 
simple, c'est les chansonnettes, c'est les comédiens, c'est les films. Nous, par exemple, dans notre secteur, nous, comme Mediaset, on dépense plus ou moins un milliard, on investe un milliard euh, par an, et on en met 220 dans le, dans le fiction, dans le TV drama, et on en met 120, 130 dans les films. Ce qu'il disait hier, euh, monsieur euh, le président Sarkozy, moi, je trouve, je le underline, undersign, euh, mais complètement. Pourquoi Finalement, on a quelque chose. Étant moi un vieux qui a vu il y a 30 ans comment s'est développée, comment elle est née la télévision commerciale, je me mets dans les pieds de, de ces messieurs qui sont les nouveaux. Moi, je me rappelle quand on était venu ici en France à faire la 5 et on nous disait, mais le cinéma, vous allez... Et on avait un tas de règles qui ne permettaient pas de faire le, du cinéma le samedi ou le dimanche ou ne permettaient, de, ne permettaient pas de mettre la pub euh, dans le... Je ne sais pas, il fallait en mettre un seulement de, de, de break publicitaire. Donc, je comprends que la liberté, l'envie la, d'expression... Nous, on était corsaires à ce temps-là. On était peut-être un peu pirates, mais on payait les droits, parce que qu quand on achetait en Amérique et tout ça... Et moi, je me rappelle que la fameuse exception culturelle du temps de Delors, du temps, du temps de Jack Lang, ici en, en France, c'était quelque chose qu'on disait, mais pourquoi nous, on ne peut pas aller en Amérique acheter des séries pour 1000 dollars pour une heure ou deux heures, et nous devons acheter des films qui ont peut-être moins de succès que les Dynasty Dallas, qui était à ce moment-là à la une, à la mode. Et c'était la question, un peu comme eux. Mais à la fin, ce que disait hier euh, M. Sarkozy, à la fin, tu as protégé la culture française. Moi, je ne crois pas que le cinéma, c'est comparable à Aristote ou à, ou à Verdi ou à Mozart. Mais de toute façon, c'est la culture. Pense. <rire> mais il faut les protéger aussi. Il faut protéger aussi, je ne dis pas les Big Brothers, mais ceux qui investissent et tout ça, et ils font... Et, et, et si on fait des recettes sur des programmes, sur des programmes comme cela, je ne vois pas pourquoi les investissements ne doivent pas arrêter. Quand Moi, j'ai vu l'autre jour qu'ils vont investir 100 millions de dollars dans les télévisions. Throughout the world, ben, c'est rien du tout. Dans, la, dans, dans une télévision mondiale, 5 millions de dollars. Donc, moi, je dis, si vous voulez prendre nos produits, nos contenus, payez l'addition. « There is no such a thing as a free lunch ». C'est un vieux mot. Et donc, allons-y, comme ça. C'est vrai que le président était très soucieux du cinéma et de ce qu'on a préservé. Donc vous, vous et comment est-ce que vous réagissez à la question des, des pirates, justement Est-ce que ça vous a changé votre, votre, votre vue sur la, sur la création ce que vous allez faire Est-ce que vous allez faire évoluer votre modèle Comment vous vous voyez dans, dans quelques années, dans ces nouveaux non, médias, nous, pour un média Nous, nous vous... voyons dans la technologie. Parce que nous, des émissions qui sont surtout pour les jeunes, on leur cite... Et nous, dans leur site, on met la publicité et on fait l'argent. Donc, a... c'est évident que nous devons décliner notre proposition, notre offre de télévision sur les différentes plateformes. Nous, on était dans l'analogue, on était généraliste, on a maintenant des, des chaînes thématiques, on en a plusieurs parce que le digital permet de multiplier l'offre. Et puis, on est dans le, dans le net, l'Internet. Évidemment, parce qu'il eh, y a des programmes qui sont intéressants, mais c'est quand même chez nous. Vous voyez, notre business model est, est axé sur deux euh, colonnes. C'est le copyright, la propriété intellectuelle, et l'exclusivité. Si vous n'avez pas l'exclusivité, par exemple, récemment, il y a eu une question, une question qui était euh, pour des matchs de football qui était euh, l'émission, je crois que c'était en Turquie ou en Grèce. Et c'était un match de Champions League. Nous, on paie sur les Sanou, Sky, euh, qui, qui fait l'émission pour l'Italie. Nous payons sur les 100 millions d'euros de, pour avoir tous les matchs de, de Champions League. On paie plus ou moins le même, le même chiffre pour avoir les matchs de championnat italien. Si quelqu'un de la Turquie, parce qu'il a, il peut, et maintenant la technologie permet un tas de choses, et transmet le même match que chez nous, que nous avons dans notre exclusivité, c'est fini. C'est la fin des haricots. 
et on va, on, on s'en va, on ne peut plus payer. Euh, et, et les équipes, le football, c'est pas. Marc, je crois que quand même, du point de vue social, il a de l'importance. Mais ce n'est pas évidemment de la propriété. Mais moi, je vous répète, exclusivité et copyright. Donc, ce qui est à nous, il faut le respecter. C'est ça. Et si tu le veux, tu dois payer. Si tu veux le transmettre n'importe n'importe avec quel moyen, par le, dans le ciel, sous la terre, parce que maintenant, c'est partout, digital ou pas, mais tu dois payer. C'est ça. Et ça, ça, ça relève de, de, de la, du cadre réglementaire, de la loi. Vous, vous pensez que l'environnement... Le, euh, législatif que Mme Creuse dé décrivait est mais, adapté. Et, et mais Mme Creuse a fait ça. des gros efforts. Moi, je partage par exemple, elle a fait une belle chose, le Digital Agenda. On s'est réunis deux fois à Bruxelles avec les CEO des télécoms et tout ça. Et son but, c'est de développer le, le, les usagers, multiplier. Et moi, je crois que le, le mot, c'était « Every EU citizen must be digital ». C'était ça, le, le mantra. Donc, <rire> Should, Every European should be digital in 2013. Yeah. Yeah. We're on the way. <laughs> et ça, c'est formidable. Et nous, on partage bien, bien sûr ça. Mais et, et il y a des règles, par exemple, parce que ce n'est pas seulement la question de la culture et tout ça, la protection des mineurs, c'est une chose importante. Et il y a les cinq points de la, de la commission qui sont partis. Il y a le Green Paper, il y a des directives sur l'émission. Non seulement, il y avait la direction de la... Télévision sans frontières, années 90. Et puis, il y a maintenant une autre euh, directive sur les médias et les, les nouveaux modèles de, de, qu'on qu voit comme ça. Et, et, et tout ça, c'est bien. Mais ce que, par exemple, ici en France, il y a une belle chose, c'est la, la, la DOPI. Et on en parle aussi dans, la, dans le report qu'on qu a vu avant. Et c'est quelque chose quand même seulement pour l'usager final. Et moi, je crois que c'est bien qu'on va, euh, surtout sur les jeunes que, qui n'ont pas fait les sacrifices qu'on a fait, surtout celle de, celle de ma génération, que je me rappelle quand un disque coûtait 3 ou 4 000 lire et vous aviez la prélude de l'après-midi d'un fond, et ce n'était pas une symphonie, c'était seulement un disque, je me rappelle, 25 cm de, de, de euh, temps du vinyle, c'était le temps de la préhistoire, en, en parlant avec ce jeune homme. Mais euh, je veux dire que si vous voulez les habitués à effacer le mot gratuit, ou tout au moins gratuit pour certaines choses, mais ajouter qu'il faut payer quelque chose. Voilà, il faut les adopter. Moi, je trouve que c'est bien pour ça, parce que c'est comme un rappel quand on est sur l'autoroute, attention que tu vas à 130 ou à 140. Ça, c'est bien. Mais ce n'est pas le goal, le target, le but final, ce n'est pas ceux qui font le piratage. C'est seulement l'usager final qui ne sait pas. Voilà. Moi, je crois que c'est dans la bonne direction. Et puis, moi, je crois que politique d'abord dans toutes les choses. Nous, on peut faire nos modèles. Ceux qui font, se font la concurrence. Euh, ceux qui sont dans le plan économique veulent gagner tous ceux qui peuvent, veulent être monopolistes, parce qu'on est tous pour la concurrence, mais si on pouvait être seul dans le monde à faire payer ce qu'on veut, ce serait le bien absolu. Mais à part ça, ça c'est la politique qui doit intervenir et dire, bon, les, les conflits d'intérêts doivent être réglés comme ça. Merci beaucoup, quelle jolie transition. <rire> Puisqu'après avoir eu le, le point politique de, de Madame Cross, euh, et maintenant nous allons donc écouter euh, Victoria euh, Espinel. Uh, so you have heard a lot about uh, is intellectual property a, a universal uh, value? Uh, we have heard um, some comments from actors and from um, politics and um, and different types of angles. You are in, in charge of that for the government, the American government. So what's your next move from the regulate, regulator and political point of view? Thank you. Um, thank you. So um, uh, maybe I'll just begin by saying in my job, 
is overseeing intellectual property generally for the United States, which is obviously much broader than copyright. So we have a whole host of issues that we're very concerned about, um, including, just to name a few, patent enforcement overseas, particularly in China. We're very concerned about the trade secrets that our technology companies have and their ability to, the, the, and, and the fact that they're being stolen and often transferred overseas. So there's a whole host of very serious issues that we're trying to deal with. Um, but for not, purposes... Not, not only for artists, but 